Hello everyone, welcome. I wanted to do a follow-up video. Basically I had published a, another video which will be probably replaced by this one, uh, where I went in detail um, how to make this setup of a Houdini uh, Morse machine. And um, someone, some guy uh, approached me, uh, a guy named uh, Robin Bornhauer, sorry if I mispronounce your name, um, he was kind enough to provide me with a very elegant solution in Python, which took care pretty much of a great part of my setup there. And I was super inspired and um, very grateful that he, he did so. Um, and I wanted to basically recreate, uh, uh, take this opportunity to learn and uh, do a similar thing uh, in VEX as, a, as an exercise. So I spent some time um, studying his setup and trying to um, basically do a similar thing in VEX. And this is uh, what I came up with. So as you can see, the setup um, now... It will also now highlight the current uh, um, code being played. Uh, if it's either a dot or a dash. And the limitation from the previous setup as well was that it was impossible to type and have the audio uh, update automatically. And now that is also taken care of due to the nature of this uh, updated setup. And to allow us to do it interactively, there is a script here, um, which you can see um, is an auto hotkey script which will tr trigger uh, basically control uh, enter every time we type a key. So unfortunately I wasn't able to have this behavior in Houdini. I wanted to basically make this text input commit to every keystroke, but I couldn't do it natively. So that script is the, the solution for this. Uh, but as you can see here, I will uh, remove letters and uh, everything will update automatically now. Uh, both the code and also the audio being generated. So it's very satisfying to see it uh, being created on the fly. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what uh, we have right now. So I will go more into detail now how this was done. Show uh, um, his script here. Um, he's using a dictionary. Um, and um, basically setting pairs of uh, of strings, uh, defining what each of these uh, things should mean in terms of uh, Morse code, if it's either a dot or a dash. Um, and um, there is a uh, similar thing since Houdini, if I'm not mistaken, Houdini 17.5 or 18 or something uh, relatively uh, recent, uh, which now VEX also support dictionaries. So I had to dig a little bit and because there isn't a lot of uh, information on how they work, but they are very similar to, um, to arrays basically, and we can access these strings as well uh, in a similar fashion. So. Um, the setup is very well uh, documented, uh, I believe. Um, it's a bit, uh, it's very straightforward. One interesting thing that I also got inspired by him was to declare uh, custom functions, something that I usually don't do much. So it was a great exercise in this case. We are uh, defining a uh, add point function, and this will basically, when we call this in our script, uh, we can parse a bunch of attributes and it will basically set set the attributes based on what we parse. So very useful uh, and much, much uh, better than the, the craziness that I was doing before, which was setting this completely manually. As you can see, it was um, a lot of um, the same code repeated uh, thousands of times. So um, this is very nice. And uh, in here, uh, basically, how the script works, um, we it's basically uh, three, four loops uh, for each loops uh, uh, under each other. So in in sequence. So first we iterate over the words, 
and in this case it's uh, we are splitting the input words which are here um, into separate into a separate array so this will generate two two iterations and and so forth so for each uh, word uh, we will iterate over the letters and so on and then in here there will be a we will start decoding the, the actual letter into its correspondent uh, Morse code, like so. And um, there are a bunch of attributes being set up right here, like this uh, attribute M, which is the one that uh, drives most of the things. Uh, it's short for Morse. And um, basically, I'm setting if they are um, if they are a dot, it will be a M value of one. If it's a dash, it will be a value of two. So in here, we are accessing basically the string of the di dictionary. Um, if it's a certain letter, it will check for its pair and then iterate over each of these uh, characters there and it will define a new point um, based off of its sign, if it's a dot or a dash. So this is what this is doing. And uh, there is uh, also already built in the uh, option to increase letter spacing and um, letter uh, line spacing as well. So like so and so forth. Um, but I just keep them as a one unit because I like the way they align with the grid quite nicely there. So yeah, that's uh, all there is to this. Um, this case here is the exact same. But this one has the line break um, toggle turned on. The reason for that is that we use this information here to to generate the the rolling. So basically, we synchronize the position in space of these dots with the with the audio position, so that we can. Um, in this case, I'm just coloring the the current frame as a red color just to indicate what is being currently played. Um, there's a little bit of math involved, but um, it's quite simple. So that's why um, I force this to be always linear, so it will match. And then there is a, a um, option here that we can either turn it on and off, uh, which will just um, either use the position of this input or this input. So, and that's how this is this part is done so as you can see as we go forward the the text will light up and um, the final visualization you're just uh, creating a font um, node and then just placing it above there um, and then now to to the audio part of it um, there is a slightly uh, modified version of this setup here and the way it is different is that it creates a um, point per each unit because the way that this the setup in COPS works is that it needs um, each data point per unit otherwise it will not recognize um, those values uh, if there is a gap here they will just uh, be read as one uh, one sample after the other so this is the information that goes into the COP network. As you can see here, we are just displacing. Um, if it's a dot, if it's a dash, it will go uh, to Z two, and if it's a um, if it's a minus one or minus two, which means it's a spacing uh, data point, it will go to Z one, and if it's a dot, it will it will just remain. Uh, at zero. So this is this here. What we are seeing these points are the exact representation of this orange line down here, which is being fed to the cops. And the way it works is that it has a node called copy in cops, which we can uh, set up a trigger threshold. So whenever these uh, these values on this orange line here, as you can see, whenever they cross the threshold specified they will copy a uh, instance of this here, which is the the dot. 
Um, and that's how we define their positions in the audio timeline right here using this technique. And the way, the reason this is uh, a separate setup is that it's just um, a bit more specific in terms of uh, the length that it needs to be. But in this case, we could, of course, uh, like, as you can see, we could still manipulate the audio here and increase the, um, the spacing between the, the words or between the 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 actual uh, dots and dashes if we wanted to. But these are the values that I think that sound more realistic uh, when hearing like actual Morse uh, code. Um, but yeah, it, it all depends uh, in your uh, your preference. You could uh, want this uh, faster or slower or uh, all of that. So this is um, pretty much it, I think. Um, the setup is available for downloading. You can check the link below in the description. Um, I will leave this here as a as a just a, a demonstration how to not do this. But still, there are a few uh, funny things here, and um, yeah, I feel like there is no reason not to to not include this um, since I already published the first version of the file, which was only this section. There is no reason not to keep it. Um, but yeah, um, that's it. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in the next one.